Now that we're about halfway through House of the Dragon second season, author George R. R. Martin finally revealed what he thinks about the show. As you all know, Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon are adapted from his A Song of Ice and Fire saga, as well as his first volume of Fire and Blood. Thanks to his amazing writing, HBO has made some of the most successful shows in recent history. In his Not A Blog update, he shared his thoughts about the second season of House of the Dragon. Although they are adapting most of Fire and Blood, the show's writers are adding a lot of their own variations to the story. They're essentially making their own version of the Dance of the Dragons. I want to go over what he said because I know I'm not the only one who wanted to know how he feels about the new season. He said, back in November, I was able to stop by the House of the Dragon sets. They were spectacular. I have visited real castles that did not look half as imposing as the Red Keep and Dragonstone did. I could have easily gotten lost, just like Blood and Cheese did. I was also able to see the first two episodes of House of the Dragon's new season, A Son for a Son, and Rhaenyra the Cruel. What a great way to start the season. The directing was amazing. Game of Thrones veteran Alan Taylor directed the first episode, and Claire Kilner the second. Both of them did a magnificent job, and I cannot say enough about the acting. Emma Darcy has only one line in A Son for a Son, but they did so much with their eyes and their face that they dominate the episode. Her grief for her slain son is palpable. Also, Tom Glenn Carney brings Aegon alive in ways we have not seen before. He's more than a villain here. He shows us the king's rage, his pain, his fears, and his doubts. We're able to see his humanity. Rhys Siphons has been splendid as Otto Hightower every time he has been on the screen, but he exceeded himself in the second episode. His scene with Aegon and Sir Kristen Cole after the rat catchers are hanged just crackles with wit, tension, and drama. It was a performance that cries out for awards attention. Matt Smith, Olivia Cook, Fabian Frankel, Eve Best, and the other regulars were wonderful as well. The Cargill brothers were amazing also, and their climactic sword fight is right up there with the Mountain and the Red Viper of Dorne, and Brienne's fight with Jaime Lannister. And Fia Sabin gave a wrenching, heartbreaking performance as Helena Targaryen, Aegon's doomed, haunted queen, and mother to his children. Sabin is especially noteworthy. Very little of what she brings to the part was actually in my source material. Last season, House of the Dragon essentially recreated Viserys, giving him a much different backstory and far more depth than the jolly party-loving king I created for Fire and Blood. He should have won an Emmy. I think all of us fans agree with that also. What he did in the 8th episode alone should have won him an award. Now he goes on to say House of the Dragon's writers have done the same thing here with Elena. In the Fire and Blood novel, she is a happy young woman, cheerful and kindly, adored by the small folk. A dragon rider since a young age, Helena's greatest joy in life is to take to the skies on the back of her dragon Dreamfire. None of the strangeness she displays in the show was in evidence in Fire and Blood, nor is her gift for prophecy. Those ideas were born in the writer's room, but once I met the show's version of Helena, I could hardly take issue. Fia Sabin's Helena is a richer and more fascinating character than the one I created in Fire and Blood, and in the second episode, you can scarcely take your eyes off her. I know I certainly agree with this as well. Helena's ability to see events from the future make her a far more fascinating character. He goes on to say the show added a brand new character as well, the dog. I am not usually a fan of writers adding characters to the source material when adapting a story especially not when the source material is mine. I was ready to hate Cheese, but I hated him even more when he kicked the dog. And later, when the dog stays at his feet gazing up, that damn near broke my heart. Such a little thing, such a little dog, but he added so much. The few short moments he was on the screen gave the rat catcher so much more humanity. As you all know, us as humans are such complex creatures. The silent presence of that dog reminded us that even the worst of men, the vile and the venal, can love and be loved back. I wish I thought of that dog. I didn't, but someone else did, and I'm glad of that. Once again, I think it's safe to say every fan agrees. The scene with the dog reminded me of moments I've seen in real life where a dog will lay over the grave of their owner. It's one of the saddest things you'll see. Even after death, they don't want to leave their side. He said the second episode has been receiving great reviews for the most part. A lot of fans are announcing it as the best episode of House of the Dragon, and some are even ranking it higher than the best episodes of Game of Thrones. Now if you ask me, I happen to think it's one of the best episodes of House of the Dragon, however, I don't think it's as great as some of those amazing Game of Thrones episodes. The only thing about the show that is receiving criticism is the end of the blood and cheese scene, which the ending was powerful I thought. A gut punch, especially for viewers who have never read Fire and Blood. For those who have read the book however, well, there's a lot to be said about that. 
but this is not the place for me to say it. The issues are too complicated. Somewhere down the line, I will do a separate update about the issues raised by Blood and Cheese and Maylor the Missing. There's a lot to say. For the nonce, I will just say that I really liked the second episode. I liked it in London the first time I saw it, and I liked it even more on the second watching. I hope you did as well. Maybe it even made you cry. Well, as you can see, George R. R. Martin had a lot of nice things to say about the show. He likes a lot of the additions they made. I think the ones he mentioned do make the show better. I just find it interesting how he doesn't want to say much about the blood and cheese scene right now. Think about what he actually said, or didn't say for that matter. Although he basically did say the scene was effective, it sounds like he doesn't love it as much as the version written in Fire and Blood. It seems like he doesn't want to say anything negative about the show right now, while it's still airing new episodes. He said somewhere down the line he will make another update about the issues raised by Blood and Cheese. Also notice how he said Maylor the Missing. I'm sure he doesn't like the fact that they left him out of that scene. Some of you might even remember what he said about Game of Thrones whenever Dan and Dave left someone out of the show. He would always mention the butterfly effect and how leaving someone out of one scene might greatly affect other scenes down the road. Changes will come into effect. Uh, what I call the butterfly effect, which I'm sure you know, being the audience you are, you all understand because you've read Ray Bradbury's The Sound of Thunder, you know. You step on a butterfly in the Pleistocene and it seems very minor, but uh, suddenly you return to the future and all of human history has changed because uh, of that butterfly. A, a small change can produce large changes later on. And that's, uh, that's a question on the show. I mean, we've already seen in the first season, as faithful as it was, Everyone who has read Fire and Blood knows why Maylor made the blood and cheese scene so much better. We also know Maylor will be needed for other scenes in later episodes. With that being said, I also don't want to say much about this right now either because I don't actually know how he feels about it. I'm only assuming he isn't happy about Maylor missing from that scene. He obviously said that for a reason. I hope he does give another update about that one day. I also hope he lets us know what he thinks about the other episodes. I'm sure they're not done with adding or subtracting characters from the show. Let me know what you think about his update down below. How many of you agree with what he said about Helena and the dog? Also, let me know what issues you think he has with the blood and cheese scene. Leave it all down below. As always, I want to thank all of you for watching another video. I will be releasing a lot more videos every week. Have a great day everyone. I will see you again very soon. Bye.